Welcome all you early birds. <sighs> Hello, Frank. Star was on mute. Hello, Trixie. Okay. Hello, Man, hello. You were looking so roaring 20s. <laughs> I'm, I know, I'm always looking retro something. <laughs> you're, 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 what do they call them? The flappers, the flappers, the girls in the clubs with Al Capone. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's it. You've got it. I hear that's the trumpets. Right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I used to do 1940s pinup actually, and I did a few 20s, and I've done some 50s and 60s, and now I'm like super in love with the 70s. <laughs> well, wonderful. This is wonderful, and Bonnie's here. Yeah, hi, is Bonnie she, Ann. She's in the kitchen getting hi. the brownies and the, and the cranberry juice, the organic cranberry juice. I'm having a virtual celebration Saturday, the November 7th. Oh. A, relief, a relief that elections is finally over, nonpartisan cocktail party, and I've been invited three uh, Toastmasters stand up comics. Oh, fun. Is Dia Klein one of them? Uh, not yet, but everyone's invited. It's on my Facebook. Well, Dia Klein is a relatively newer Toastmaster, and she does some really funny skits because she's as Namiak, she can't smell. I always say that the wrong way. I know that. I know that. Yeah, I visited her club over at CU several times over the past year and a half. I hate yeah, saying I that. I'm like, ah, this is a... <laughs> yeah, this is a non serious social relief um, cocktail uh, virtual uh, potluck party. Cool. Fun, fun, fun. Awesome. That sounds great. Are you yeah. uh, sending the links out via email or how are you doing that? I, I haven't, it just came up the, like, you know, a pipe dream out of the side of my head. So I just popped the invite on Facebook. I wasn't thinking about a formal broadcast, but, uh, and I only have a hundred seats in my Skype, in my Zoom rather. So okay. um, I've got 400 friends. So I think it could fill up fast, but yeah, I'll just, yeah, it's just a fun time, you know, bring a lighthearted attitude. It's just time to, not talk about anything in reality, nothing serious. Right, and right. Good laughs, puns, jokes, good laughs. I think I'm connected to you. I I just uh, did a lot of cl house cleaning on Facebook and sometimes you get a little button happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. So I've already okay. had to re-invite like four people. They're like, I don't think you meant to delete me. I was like, no. <laughs> I understand. Right. But that's the world. That's the world of tech. Yeah, there's several. I have one that's personal, and behind me is a lake. I think Dream Lake's behind me, and my face is in the middle. And then I have a business one for Frank D. Dominicus and Associates LLC. Okay, so I have one that has your face and you're like, hey, and that's then me. I have one that's like the world. <laughs> uh, ignore the one that's the world. Take the happy face. Okay, yep. For some reason, we weren't connected, so I probably got button happy. Facebook and I have, I think we need marriage counseling because uh, I got a reprimand from them when I asked, why can't I get into my account? It's sending me to two stupid old accounts I'm embarrassed to have that I tried to delete. But you guys have that policy, right? Six months, and if you even click it once, it's reactivated. So, yeah. But now I can't get into my real, my clean sites, and they sent me a reprimand saying we have a policy that you can't own more than one site. And then I started complaining to people on the bad sites, friends on there, going, "This isn't my usual site. I'm embarrassed by how bad it is." But I'm tr I'm in dialogue, and three times I kept bitching and complaining. And then finally, Facebook of its own accord allowed me back into my proper accounts. Welcome to Facebook. Welcome to the world of social media. <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie's on mute. Stephanie, hello. Thank you so much. I only got to see you like once or twice on a Zoom early on. So I'm happy to see you again. And thank you so much for all your work. Hopefully you feel like I didn't leave you in the lurch. It's been kind of a crazy month for me health-wise. And so I was like chasing everything down for this virtual networking this, this month. No problem. I'm happy to help and I'm glad for this opportunity. So thank you for letting the Foothills Division 
post this month. Yeah, definitely. We're going to do Western next month with Marianne Delaney. So oh, those are the ones that like Northern and Foothills and Western, they get swept under the rug so often. And, you know, when I did this a couple of years ago, it was like, okay, I'm going to lump you guys and I'm going to lump you guys and I'm going to lump you guys. But then I didn't feel like people got their opportunity to shine. And now that we have every single month, mostly on Zoom, and we expect that for the next eight months we will have, I want to do this hopefully for everyone and get a great opportunity. We will still have to crunch probably Denver Urban Metro together, but they're used to being together. <laughs> Welcome Julia Hannon. I see a pretty smiling picture. She might be stepped away. Hi there, sorry about that. I have to charge my phone and I'm trying to multitask. I uh miss it. It's all good. Our, I don't know everyone in the Toastmasters world. So are you a fellow, fellow Toastmaster? Or are you new? So actually, I have not done Toastmasters in years. I saw the post for the event and thought I'd check it out. Um, I moved away from New York about 25 years ago, and I was in the Toastmasters before I left there. So huh. yeah, I'm seriously considering getting back in here where I am. That's great. That is great. Awesome. Well, we welcome you, welcome you. Are you in Colorado now then? Actually, I'm not. I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay, awesome. Great. Yeah. Well, we love to have people from all over. And the great thing with us having virtual meetings now is you can join any club anywhere. So <laughs> really a great opportunity. And we welcome visitors from other places. And being that you're still in the U.S., that's a great opportunity because we don't have to worry about, oh, are you in pounds or francs or, you know, what money do we have to change hands? And I think that's the only that's hardship. So we welcome you and I'm so grateful to have you here and we'll have an opportunity to chat more afterwards and ask questions, et cetera. Bonnie okay. Ann, now that you're back, you got your drink, how are you doing, my dear? I am doing well. Good, good. I will get on that flyer for you. Um, if you want some assistance there, I can use the one that you have and we can talk about it next week. It's just been an overwhelming week. So if you don't mind, we can set it up next week and I'll, we have till you said that event is on November 13th, correct? Yes, but of course we want to send it out, you know, as much sooner than that, as soon yeah. as possible. We've got but actually the reason I'm here tonight is because uh, I think it's uh, on my strategic relations pathway that they oh. they think that networking is something I ought to do as a required oh, project. Good. So good, good. I felt this would be an opportune time to take care of that particular issue. Yeah, definitely. And if you want more information on it, I have a division letter that I send to the division director. Stephanie was a part of that. I have a whole marketing uh, event timeline that is laid out. So if you just follow it and say, okay, I, I made a blog or I made the flyer and you just go down the list, you can really hit a lot of those. So if you want more information, you know my email, email me and I'd be happy to send any of that to you. And anyone on this call, fellow Toastmasters, if if you want to host your own networking event and you want that information, that's not something that a lot of people ask me for, but I do get asked from here or there. So let me know. Okay, email me, just remind me. I'll pop into the chat uh, while we're waiting for all our guests. I see one of them coming in. Oops, no, not share screen. That's Stephanie, perfect. I like the uh, division banner in the background. It's a nice touch. Great, I'm glad you like it. I, it took me a while to figure out how to set it up and I, uh, it's sort of jerry-rigged. So if it stays up for the whole meeting, that'll be awesome. Mine's hooked <laughs> up there with a thumbtack, come on. <laughs> awesome, welcome Sarah Elshoff. Hopefully I said that correctly. You did. Good. I'll see you, my friend. A lot of people get it wrong, so good for you. Awesome, welcome. And your name sounds familiar. Have we met before? Are you in a Toastmasters meeting? I I don't think we've met before. I have done some volunteering at various contests and that kind of thing. So oh, okay. Sure. That's probably where. Got it. Awesome. Yeah. Where are you from? 
Uh, I am from the Ball Talks Toastmasters group. So we are part of the Ball Corporation and we're a corporate club. Awesome. Five years. Great. And is that here in Colorado or where is that at? Yeah. Okay, good. Broomfield area. Okay, awesome, awesome. I'm, I've only been in Colorado since 2015, so I know a few places only because Marsha and Rhea dragged me around everywhere and I willingly went along with them. But other than that, I probably wouldn't know Colorado. So forgive me if I sound like I ask stupid questions. I just don't know what's, what's in our area sometimes and what's not. And what part of town are you in? I'm in Denver Tech Center down in Greenwood Village. Okay. So, I, my home club is Eloquent Entrepreneurs, and then now I've narrowed it down. I was in five, now I'm only in three clubs, uh, two here in District 26. I'm in the I'm Just Saying Club, and then in Deming, New Mexico Toastmasters, Wednesday evening with my mother and my sister. I roped them in about a fun. year ago. <laughs> so awesome. That's nice. fun. Thank you. Hi, nice hi Nancy. You. I see Nancy here. Good. And Linda Ray, our speakers are here. So I feel, oh, okay. Much breathe. Sigh of relief, right? When your when your speakers and your your guest speakers are coming around. It's like, okay, are they gonna be here? Even in person, you like all are nervous right. until they show up. Right. That would be cute. so much. And we have Julie Cooley and Linda Reinhart and Cora. Dolly Hale. I, I love that it, you're the dual name person like me. I don't try and confuse you all, but in my normal world, I go by Trisha Trixie Hunter. Lori's here too, Trixie. Oh, she's over there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're hiding out. <laughs> Got all of you. Great. Hi, Julie. Socialize with each other. Hey, Nancy. Good to see you. You look good. Oh. Uh, thank you. I'll see you next week, right? You will. <laughs> Julie and I are having lunch next Saturday. <laughs> oh, how nice. <laughs> she was my, in case you didn't know, she was my roommate last year at the convention in Denver. Oh, okay. Cool. She just, she just moved here from Connecticut. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, Linda. I think you'll all see a lot of Julie as time goes by. So Nancy <laughs> had lunch with her next Saturday. I had lunch with her last Saturday. <laughs> and I introduced Julie to Nancy. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> it's all Linda's fault, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Once you get to know Julie, you'll say, oh, thank you, Linda, for Julie. Yeah, I know, I know. She's been destined to be in Colorado her whole life. <laughs> She finally made it, right? So Yay. Yeah. Yeah, finally. So what club did you join, Julie? So the Aurora Tours. Oh, the Aurora Tours. Oh, good. That's a good club. That's a good club. Welcome, Susan Minsky. That's not a name I recognize. Uh, welcome. Where are you from? Tell us a little bit of, about yourself. Don't forget to unmute. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> I am Su Susan Minsky, front member, proud member of Front Range Toastmasters. Range, right. Awesome. You Welcome. know, June, you know June Hale, Susan. I've heard of her. Okay, I didn't know if she still attended that club or not. No, ma'am. Okay, okay. She's probably out of Toastmasters now. <laughs> Some people aren't as uh, <laughs> aren't as um, you know. Um, determined as I was to stay in as long as I have. <laughs> yeah, 40 what? How many years? 40 years? 40, 40 years this year. That is awesome. Wow. Happy That's anniversary. This year? Oh, wow. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Wow. You should do like a little like Zoom yourself. Like, hey, I'm celebrating 40 years in Toastmasters and invite everyone. And have them wear like party hats or something. I'll totally help you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's an achievement, people. Come on, 40 years of dedication, devotion to that. Right. There's a couple of other Toastmasters. One, two. Uh, well, Alan Swartz has been in long as I have. Well, yeah. <laughs> Ray Moore. I can't remember if he's been that long. But there's there's a few others that have also been in 40 years. So. <laughs> 
That's amazing. We have a member in my club who's been in our club for 54 years. And who is that? Do I know that wow. person? Yeah, who is I that? I doubt any of you know him. His name is Merv Graham. Merv Graham. I don't, I he's don't know. He's never him. been a leader in the district. He just comes to the club and he's amazing. Oh, <laughs> see, that's, that's, they, they need to be a district leader at some point <laughs> during their, <laughs> uh, I dare you to tell Merv that. I want to watch. Hey, I would. I would. I would tell anybody. If you've been in that long, you you should have served in a district <laughs> leadership of some sort. Hi, Jacqueline. Oh well, she. I don't know if she's there. We got a picture of her. <laughs> so is everybody here in Toastmasters? It's it's here. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm feeding my dog at the moment, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Is the dog in Toastmasters? Our, one of our guests, Julia Hannon, is not currently in Toastmasters, but she shared a little bit before you came on that she was in Toastmasters. Oh, okay. So see, that's one of the great benefits of this is yes, people from all over and other Toastmasters can join because we're right. all looking for dual membership. So why not cross connect? And some of those people that see things on other places that I share, because you all should know me by now, I shared it in 27 something Facebook groups and on next door and everywhere, you know, then someone says, wait, Toastmasters, hmm, that's interesting. I used to be in that. And then they want to hear more and see what's going on. So that's great. And I'm glad Jacqueline could make it. She is finishing up work. So that's why you see her face. <laughs> <laughs> she'll be she'll be a little more present. And you guys keep on talking. I'm getting the intros ready and everything here for these fabulous speakers. They will get started at six. Now I have one question before that. Nobody told me speaking order. So who wants to go first? <laughs> I think I wrote you and said I wanted to be second. Okay. It's on that's, the agenda. It's well, no, it says speaker one and speaker two. I take right. that back. Right. Okay, that's right. Linda, you said you Nancy, wanted to go you, second. You were you were in Toastmasters before me, so you should be number one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I assumed I was first. I don't know why. I just assumed I was first. It's I okay. thought that too, but I just, like I said, it's been just crazy. So I just want to make sure. I just feel like, you know, sometimes you feel like you just keep stumbling over your feet and no matter how hard you try, you just keep making mistakes. And right. that's been this week. It's like, ah, I don't want to like make any more. So I was just being sure. <laughs> Better to ask than be wrong. Right, right. right. Well, somebody can... oh. I was just... going to say, Susan, I'm sorry we couldn't get you a speaking slot in this meeting. I <laughs> wish you had spoken up a bit sooner, but there are certainly so many other opportunities for you. So I will be getting in touch with some of those options if you're interested. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Awesome. And if anyone else is looking for a wonderful speaker, please reach out to Susan. I think she has a speech she's wanting to give. Okay. I don't know who told you I was a wonderful speaker, <laughs> but <laughs> I'll take a compliment when I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, things at work have just been so crazy and I that's part of the reason why I let Jonathan know last night, or or was it Wednesday I emailed him? <laughs> I don't even know what day of the week it is at the moment. So, <laughs> y'all, please, please excuse the la lapse in brain judgment. <laughs> hmm. So, does anybody have to use have to use a password to get into the meeting? No, nope. well, we okay. shouldn't have to. No, I, I just was curious because I've never, I've never had to use a password anytime I've used Zoom, even though they send a password. I've never had to use one. So, so the link that I, 
I, I tricked you all. I, I'm, I'm the Zoom support for a reason. So the link that gets back sent back to you in your confirmation has PW encoded in the link code. So when you click on that, it actually automatically types in that password for you on the back end. So oh. <laughs> if you if you don't know how to send those links or you don't send them in that manner or you're sending just the meeting Zoom link, then that would require the password as well. But I have it set up uh, because we have the enterprise account, I can set it up to do that through the okay. district. So okay. On meetings, I've definitely had to sign in with passwords, et cetera. But on this, I try to make it as seamless as possible right. because we may or may not have other people who are Toastmasters and who are used to getting into these type of meetings. Right, right. <laughs> so, definitely. And I don't know if Susan is still on, but if, if not, Stephanie, you can relay this in case she stepped away. Oh, good, there you are. If you are looking for more speaking opportunities and you do have a speech ready to go, Susan, uh, if you're not in the International Members Facebook group, I would highly suggest joining it and stating, I'd love to be a guest speaker. I have a speech ready to go. Would you like a guest speaker at your club? Because so many clubs are really wanting to have guest speakers from other places. And many of the districts are also searching out other districts for speakers for their upcoming TLI. He's who I'm supposed to be. Here. Trixie, can you put the uh, place to email that information or to link to that information as far as posting if you want to give extra speeches? Yes, I will post that right now. It is on Facebook. It's the International Members Facebook group. And it's a great opportunity to really broaden your horizons. There are, you'll see some other groups and posts where other people have like an online attendance community and Toastmasters and they have Toastmasters online, etc. And so there's other groups you can join as well that are looking for speakers from that group. So that's like the main hub where the majority of people reside. There is one on LinkedIn as well. It's just not as heavily utilized, I would say. Yes, there are people that use it, but this Facebook one, everybody seems to use. <laughs> So you said that the Facebook group was Toastmasters International? Yeah, I'm pulling it up for you. It's the Toastmaster International Members Group. Members Group, okay. okay. National. I think I'm a member, but it's been a long time since I went and checked on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry, you said this was the official Toastmasters International Members Group? Yes. Joining right now. Toastmaster International. Of course, we have the slow system today. <laughs> yes, the official Toastmasters International Members Group. <laughs> Man, that's a long name. Right. Come on. There we go. Okay. All right. Now that I finally grabbed that, of course, my computer is like super slow today. <laughs> OK, let me change this to everyone. Maybe it's because of all the fires in northern Colorado. <laughs> could be, could, could be. OK, there we go. All right, so that is in there for all of you who are looking for that. If you, this is also, I talk about this in my online PR webinars as well that this is a great group to be a part of even if you want to invite people to your club use your vpprs use your virtual flyers they have all of that on toastmasters.org and then when you have that virtual flyer or you create your own flyer share it in this group invite people to your club invite them to to join invite them to be a guest and invite them to be guest speakers it's a great opportunity and I put my email in there again because the way that Zoom works, those of you who are on early saw my email and the networking info, but those of you who just joined, that gets hidden off in the abyss. <laughs> I wish that it stayed, but it doesn't. So my email is there again. You can contact me at any time if you need assistance and I keep hitting the wrong screen. I keep hitting the share screen. 
<laughs> if you are looking for more networking info, I would be happy to send that to you. I can put a draft email together that has all of those links and how am I doing this virtual networking? What do I send out? What is the hosts need to do and think about. It's actually a lot easier because when we are in person, then I need the division director to find me a location as well as manager information so I can get like that bar, that restaurant, a part of that. So it's a lot harder when it's in person. So soak it up now. If you can do virtual networking now, get used to the basics of it. And then when we do go back to being in person or hybrid, maybe that's something that you could do. Maybe you could have an in person or hybrid networking, of course, with all the codes and standards in your state. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. We have a few other people while I was getting things ready. We've got about another 15 minutes for visiting. So I want to say hello to Roland Chang. Where are you from, Roland? Tell us a little bit about you. I am the F3 Area Director. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Welcome. And Marianne Delaney. Yes. So There she Hi. is. And tell us, tell everyone where you're from. Uh, I live in Grand Junction. I'm the Western Division Director. And what do we got going on next month, Marianne? <laughs> We're having the Western Division Networking. Uh, <laughs> yes. Event. So mm -hmm. I, I better figure out what this is about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what? when is that? November when? 20th. Oh, November 20th. Okay. When? There's yes, more. the PR webinar will be the 19th and then the virtual networking the 20th. I really have been trying to separate those two. We did the first one together and people said, whoa, that was kind of a lot, one right after another. Okay. So this month I separated it, but being that it's November, there's really no other week that I could have both of those two events. So <laughs> it's a little bit crunched again in November and it might be that way in December, but we'll split it up again starting in January if all else fails. So thank you, Marianne, for joining. And we look forward to that. And any others, let's see, Mike Akins is here. Welcome, Mike Akins. Mike Akins is our IP Diddy. That's what Daryl started calling them. That's the immediate <laughs> past district director. You're the IP Diddy, right, Mike? Yep. It's all easy street. That's right. <laughs> now, what club are you in again, Mike? What's your home club? Uh, I'm gonna put it on here, talking ideas. I'm in two clubs, but Talking Ideas is the Foothills one. Okay. I knew there was a Foothills one. And then there's another one. Is it Simply Speaking? Buffalo. <laughs> See, I can't keep this straight. <laughs> Buffalo Club down in Golden, really. Down in F5. Wow. Oh, yeah, it is F this year. So I have two F Foothills. <laughs> It was Western, but yeah, we, I forgot, we moved it. <laughs> you should know, Mr. Akins, right? Yeah, you know, that was eons ago. I remember how it felt. We moved what, where, when? <laughs> we had to move 50 clubs around last year because all the turmoil. That's a lot. I couldn't believe all the different um, changes. <laughs> that was quite a bit. Let's see, Dolly's here. Dolly's in a couple of clubs, Foothills clubs. Yep, yep. We have the new Coloradan, Julie Cooley. Did you meet Julie, Mike? Yeah, Julie. I met Julie at, did, didn't we meet at convention, Julie? Yeah, and I met Mike at the convention too. Yep. <laughs> it was the place to be. Yes, right. it was. Yeah, everybody. It was the place to be. It was great. <laughs> Julie had an eye an eye on every name tag. If you're from Colorado, I'm introducing myself, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that convention didn't get postponed. So <laughs> I know. Who knows if we'll have the one in 2021. <laughs> right. I don't know. Nashville, right? So. Yeah. Yep. You never know. 
Yeah. First things first, let's get through 2020. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw on the news they're going to start cracking down again here in Colorado. So. No, no, don't tell me that. Yes, yes. Really? What are they doing? Uh, limiting groups. Uh, you can't even have five couples. Ten people, but not five couples. You can't, or I don't know. I just saw it briefly on the news before I came on here. Um, five family, I can't remember, but it was really pretty. You might as well not even... <laughs> you and your, you and your husband's about all you could do. <laughs> Maybe another couple, I suppose. But no, they're they're cracking down, cracking down on. I thought it had something to do with um with just um no more than one other household. So it could be like that was one of them. There's like there was yeah. a list of five of them. But I like I said, I was just half paying. I only turned the news on to to see what how the fires were doing. Right. So, Oh, well, hopefully we get that snow that they're predicting and hopefully right. that helps. Right. Uh, I just wanted to say good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening, Jackie or Jacqueline. I'm always hey. doing that. Sorry. Hey, Jacqueline. What's up? Like, just like I'm always calling Linda another wrong name. <laughs> so. How's everyone? Doing fine. Good. Doing fine. Stayed, in, stayed inside where it was warm all day. Yes. Absolutely. I'm in my cold office with my space heater running, but I might have to go to a warmer spot in my home. <laughs> yes, I don't like cold weather. <laughs> That's not that bad. I'm going golfing tomorrow. Oh, uh, it's tomorrow. 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 Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, sure. tomorrow. tomorrow. All right, everybody all at once. <laughs> all right. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna life. snow tomorrow what's the big deal tomorrow night i think tomorrow night yeah right. right it's gonna be 65 tomorrow mike that's 30 degrees cold warmer than today perfect yeah it is perfect. And, then, and then it drops to 21 on sunday right <laughs> oh yeah we're we're gonna indoctrinate you julie of course you came from cold <laughs> humid weather now that I'm an IP Diddy, I can go golf whenever I want to. Right, yeah. oh. 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 In. Such Rub a slacker. In. No, just kidding. Wrap it in. But I have some work coming up for you. That's right. That's, That's right. right. Hey. They can work for it. Yeah. I right. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? I see you at the top of my screen. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I see Miss Marianne at the bottom of my screen. I saw Marianne this morning. We were in a meeting this morning at seven o'clock. <laughs> seven o'clock. Yeah. What is, what is it? The early bird. Yeah. Early birds. And it was a good meeting too. I enjoyed it. <laughs> good. They're, they're out of Durango. They're doing really well. They, I think they got three new members and they have another oh, wow. member joining this weekend. Yeah. And that's uh, fantastic. Yes, they're doing very well. Awesome. We have guests from the Alamosa Club, which was great. How's yeah. Alamosa doing? Uh, they're, they're, they're in newer clubs, so they're hanging in there. I, I, I go to some of their meetings because I was Southern Division, of course, I was around while they were chartering. Okay. So yeah. I, I, I'm very supportive of that club. I, I go periodically. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any members in that club from the old club that died? I don't believe so. Okay, I just was curious because there used to be a, way back in the <laughs> in the eighties. <80s, laughs> there used to be a club in uh, Alamosa because I visited. <laughs> well, one of these days, we'll hopefully Toastmasters will start going back to all those clubs and all <laughs> those areas and rejuvenate. Right. So. All right, people, I would like to start a little bit earlier because I want to give Miss Stephanie, our wonderful host, for being our sponsor for the Division for Foothills, a little opportunity to share with us the areas that Foothills covers and any other words that you'd like to share and it, talk to us about what's going on in Foothills. And then I'll take it over at six and introduce our speakers. Over to you, Stephanie. All right, thank you so much, Trixie, and thank you to everybody 
for joining us tonight. I know it is a Friday night and this is definitely where the fun will be at. So I'm very excited to have such a great turnout. So this is again being hosted by the Foothills Division and I am the uh, Foothills Division Director. So if you are unfamiliar with the Foothills Division, we have clubs ranging all the way um, north of Denver uh, in the Lafayette area, down throughout Thornton, Westminster, Arvada, and then Lakewood, Southern Lakewood, and then into Golden. So we cover most of the, uh, it would be Northwest of Denver, the Denver area. And I just wanna give a shout out to my amazing area directors that have been able to join us today. We've got four out of the five, which is incredible. Um, we have Linda Ray, who will also be speaking. She's our F5 area director. We have Nancy Winston also will be speaking. Thank you, Nancy. We also have Dolly. Thank you for joining Dolly. I know you had a double commitment today. So I'm really pleased to see you on this call. And then finally, we have Roland Chang, who is the F4 area director. Three, I'm so sorry, Roland. I knew it was not four. And Roland is also, just a shout out, the current president of my home club, um, Damn Good Speakers. So thank you so much for representing. And I would like to see a raise of hands if you are here and you are not currently a member of Toastmasters. I am not seeing any hands raised, so that's awesome. Um, I think Julia's our only one. She had mentioned in the beginning, okay. remember that she's not in currently, but she's a former Toastmasters. That's awesome. Well, if she wanted to join, as you've said previously, you can pretty much join any club in any area or any division. So please consider the Foothills Division. It's a great division. There are tons of clubs, tons of really excited people who love Toastmasters and can really get you motivated to work hard and to meet your public speaking goals. Um, I'm not sure what else really to say i okay i guess i have two minutes left um <laughs> the the events going on in the foothills division right now i'm not really aware of any major events um if any of the area directors know of anything they want to give a shout out to please let me know i'm i don't think there was anything major any open houses coming up in any of your areas or in the clubs? Um, no, not that I'm aware of. Okay. I think this was kind of the main event that we had been advertising and encouraging members to join. So that's about it. Um, I'll awesome. turn it back over to Trixie. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's give her a wave, a round of applause. Thank you so much. It is a lot of work, whether it's virtual or in person, to get these events going. There's a lot of PR things, but as I've said before, I do task the division directors. You know the division, you know your people, you know the area, and so I do ask the division directors to help me to find the two speakers, help me get their bios, get their headshots, what they want on there, et cetera. And you know, you guys have a real life and good jobs, et cetera, as well. So that takes a little bit of extra time out of, oh, I'm trying to do my division things. Wait, er, and now I have to do this. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. And even though all of you are Toastmasters, you all can join any of the Foothills clubs as well. All clubs are looking for dual memberships and it might be a nice opportunity to branch out because like I said, I'm in Denver Tech Center. I may not normally go into the Foothills division, but 
I have friends that are in Thornton that used to be in Toastmasters and hey, maybe if I was a part of a Foothills Club, maybe one of my friends might be interested in joining. So think about that because you just never know. All right, let's get this party started. It is six o'clock. It is time for our first speaker. And I have a bio ready to read. If our wonderful speaker is ready to go, make sure that your camera's ready, your mute is off so you can speak and I will introduce you, my dear. Nancy is a distinguished Toastmaster three times over having been a member of Toastmasters for 40 years. This evening, she will dare the audience to change their habits of using those dreaded filler words. Nancy has been in Toastmasters since 1980. She joined in order to improve her ability to speak, sure, give me that word, extemporaneously, <laughs> but she stayed for the education, leadership, and camaraderie, which many of us do. She has served in the leadership capacity many times and is a past district governor, which that's what the district directors used to be called. During her many years of Toastmasters, she has achieved three distinguished Toastmasters, three DTMs, and is currently working on her fourth in Pathways. She ex is excited that she is very close to completing two of the 11 paths. Please help me welcome Nancy Winston. We are here today to offer our condolences for the loss of these words. Now, so well, you know. Let's have a moment of silence as we say goodbye. No, help me cheer their departure. Woohoo! <laughs> this is not a time of mourning, but a celebration. We've never been more excited to see these words go. They weren't really important and they shouldn't be remembered. We don't even have good memories of them. Thank goodness. How many write using these words? Now, so, well, you know? Then why do we use them in a speech? These filler words are useless. Avoid them like the plague. Throw them in the trash, incinerate them. Let's just say goodbye and good riddance to now, so, well, you know, right now. They have been overused for so long, they have ceased to be meaningful. They are barely alive. Stop using them altogether. They are a nuisance. They are worthless. These words can and will ruin any speech. Substitute with alternate words or phrases like thus, Furthermore, moving on, continuing on, or therefore, make that speech memorable instead of morbid. Now, so, well, you know, add nothing to a speech. They're uninteresting, even disgusting and despicable. What happens if you can't think of a word or phrase? Try staring at the audience while you collect your thoughts. Remember, silence is golden. Strive to be now so well, you know, free forever. After getting rid of these filler words, what else can be done to take that speech to the next level? The words great, fun, love, and very should be used as infrequently as possible. What's wrong with these words? They're inadequate, they're ineffective. They have little value, scatter them in the wind, sink them to the bottom of the ocean. Great is not really a great word. There are a plethora of other choices. How about enlightening, super, Wow, awesome, superb, marvelous. I could go on and on. <laughs> the Toastmaster meeting was great. Ugh. I've heard that a thousand times. Try other words like the Toastmaster meeting was amazing. Fun is another word used, overused. Of course, everyone wants to have fun. 
but there are synonyms that describe fun in a more picturesque way. Synonyms like enjoyable, pleasurable, joyous, lively, cheerful, and encouraging are much more vivid. The Toastmaster meeting was fun. Let's be more specific. Everyone was energetic at the meeting today. So let's have some audience participation here. So what are some other ways we can talk about what a Toastmaster meeting was? Any volunteers here? Stimulating. Stimulate. Can you say the whole sentence then? Okay, go ahead, Bonnie. The speak leaders meeting, advanced meeting is stimulating and encouraging people to join quickly and energetically. I love it. We are meticulous, <laughs> which was one of the word of the days. <laughs> Anyone else? Good sentence for describing a Toastmaster meeting. Another mm -hmm. volunteer. Anyone? Lively. Linda. Lively. Lively. Toastmaster meeting was lively. Wonderful. How about one more? How about one more? Anybody? Stephanie. <laughs> the Toastmasters meeting speeches were thought provoking. Thought provoking, wonderful. That's great. I love that word. <laughs> There's a love, okay? <laughs> love is another word used excessively. Oh, don't worry. The phrase is I love you should be said a gazillion times. But I loved your speech is blah. Okay. Did I say that already? <laughs> Old and antiquated. Try appreciate, grateful, pleasant, enjoyable. All right, very is a very overused word. Very is an extremely overused word. Throw very out of your vocabulary right now, immediately. How about some substitutions? Excruciating is more vivid than very painful. Deafening instead of very noisy. Flawless works better than very perfect. Petrified is more powerful than very scared. Anybody want to try some other of these? What could we just substitute for very often? Frequently. Frequently. All right. How about very quickly? Rapidly. Rapidly. Woohoo. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answers here, okay? <laughs> very rich. Well off. Well off. There you go. Very well simple. Wealthy, okay, there you go, in other words. See, I said there's no right answer, <laughs> or no wrong answer. Very simple. Easy. What was the word? Easy. Easy, good word. Elemental, it was <laughs> elemental. <laughs> yeah, right, elementary. How about very pretty? Beautiful. Beautiful, right, here we go. Next time you catch yourself using a phrase with very, go the extra mile to find a more vivid replacement. There are numerous responsibilities in the English language. The words things and stuff should be avoided whenever possible. Things and stuff are as lifeless as a scarecrow. <laughs> things is a word that can muddy up the waters, so to speak. What's a thing? The dictionary defines a thing as any matter, affair, or concern. Thus, it could be anything on our planet. When things refer to something specific, replace it. Say what you mean. Don't leave the audience wondering what things are. The word stuff falls into the same category as things. I did a lot of stuff today. That is so boring and bland. You really have no clue what I did. How about my day was fun filled with friends, challenges for planning for the meeting, and a bit of lollygagging. Maybe we should bury things and stuff along with now so well you know. Be careful with pronouns. They are similar to things and stuff. Pronouns can be confusing. Pronouns can be extremely vague. Use nouns instead. 
nouns cannot be misinterpreted. Colorful language will wow them. Whoops, them is a pronoun. Them could be anything on the planet. Who are we wowing? The chickens in the barnyard <laughs> or the cats in the pasture? <laughs> be specific, ensure there is no confusion when using a pronoun. Let's change the sentence to colorful language will wow those people sitting in front of you. Powerful words and phrases cre create dramatic effects. They help flowerize speeches. Sure, even make up a word now and then. It's urgent. Leave the audience speechless. Create speeches that are magical, melodic, and memorable. Color a speech with figures of speech like similes and metaphors and oxymorons. What are these? Oxymoron. Well, here's a brief description. <laughs> A simile compares two things with as or like. An example would be a Toastmasters members are as cheerful as the songbirds after a rain. Alliterations are several words in order that begin with the same letter. And this is one of my favorites. The Toastmasters meeting was exciting, exhilarating and invigorating as a walk on a cold winter night. Now, Invigorating doesn't start with E, but it sounds like it does, <laughs> okay. <laughs> An oxymoron is two words that seem to contradict each other. And I think we've heard of some of these. Jumbo shrimp, open secret, agree to disagree. How about others in the audience? What's some other oxymorons? Linda. Old news. Oh, old news, right. Okay, anyone else? Let's get some of these out there. These are these are great. Anybody? <laughs> when you ask military the, intelligence. Military. Yes. Uh that one was not on my list, but that's great. That's great. How about pretty ugly? Uh, awfully about, good. Go, anybody giant, else? Giant shrimp. Giant shrimp, right. There you go. How about negative income? <laughs> Uh, clearly misunderstood. Any, another one? Anybody? One more. One more from the audience? Yes. Marianne, you want to unmute yourself? Terribly happy. <laughs> Terribly happy. There you go. Awesome. Do you use now so well you know when writing a speech? Then why use these filler words when speaking? Don't leave the audience bumfuzzled and confused. Construct unique and dynamic speeches with creative language. Search that dictionary and thesaurus sitting on the shelf. You do know where that is, don't you? Or you could use thesaurus.com, thanks to my son. <laughs> don't be afraid even to make up words. Make it a challenge to add descriptive language in every speech with expressive words and clever phrases that will wow the audience. Avoid pesky words like things and stuff. Use figures of speech frequently to add pizzazz to that speech. Even a bit of verbal wit will go a long way to enhance a speech. Be doggedly determined to make that speech epic. Strive to be now so well you know free. Bury them filler words forever. Madam Chairman. <laughs> wow, I don't know about you, but I'm all pumped up and energized. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. That was a great speech. Let's all give her a warm round of applause. Yay, yay, yay. Thank you so much. That was great. I have to add to that when you were saying things and stuff, people in one of my groups years ago, they would say, write a list of things. And I was in this club and the gal says, don't say that, say parade of daily adventures. So oh. that's on my list. It doesn't say things to do today. It says poda or parade of daily adventures. So see, even without knowing it, I was right. awesome. those awesome. things for my vocabulary. Now, if I hear any of you speaking, I hope to hear, <laughs> I hope not hear some of those words. <laughs> this is being recorded just so everyone knows. Okay. 
I didn't, I failed to say that. See, I've got so much going on. Sorry, I forgot, but it is recorded and okay. it will, will be available for those who want it. Yeah. All right. Now, what a great, great start of this. We're going to switch it on over and let me grab the next intro here to our Miss Fabulous Linda Ray, not Rhea, because she always lets us know it's Linda Ray. All right. Are you like many people who find getting a team to succeed like a world championship sports team can be a challenge? You are not alone. Would you like to discover a solution to help your team to be distinguished? Yes, I think many of us would. <laughs> you are in luck. Today's speaker is here to share proven commitments that help team members and teams excel. Linda Ray spent most of her career understanding people's behavior relating to goals and creating strategies for goal achievement and success. She served as Toastmaster District 26 governor in a year the district was distinguished and enjoyed its highest percentage club and membership growth in recent history. And she's a Toastaholic. <laughs> <laughs> She's been a goal setter and vision creator since childhood. Since 1972, Linda has served in many career and volunteer positions, including, but I'm sure not limited to, school district finance, county treasurer and public trustee, retirement <laughs> plan chair, I'm getting tired reading these, and I'm a busy girl, town board member, water and sanitation district member, regional council of governments member, certified financial planner, professional, there's an alliteration for you, and numerous Toastmaster <laughs> leadership roles, including distinguished district governor and region 10 advisor. Linda has definitely been motivating people on their personal retirement and business goals since 1990, and now leads vision board events and mastermind groups. She is a Denver native, Colorado State University graduate, an avid gardener, and, and most, most important of all you see is the grandchild spoiler. <laughs> Let's welcome Linda Ray. And remember to unmute yourself, my dear. So I just dropped all my notes on the floor. My dog is ready to bark at any minute. And here we go. That's all part of the team. Do you find yourself on a team sometimes where people seem to be doing each other's jobs and not really clear about what they're supposed to be doing? I have. And I heard a speaker a few weeks ago tell his story and turn it into four commitments that can help us get the most out of our team. There was this young man, he was a senior in high school. He was so excited to sit on the bench in basketball. He spent four years, almost all game on the bench. The last game of the year, the coach put him in and nobody paid any attention to him. He was 6'11". Why didn't he play basketball a bit better? Who knows? Later, he actually got to go play at UCLA. And guess what he did? He sat on the bench most of the time. By the end of the year, the senior trip was coming up and his coach said, you know, we're gonna take a freshman. We're gonna let him get some time playing. This young man was devastated. And I just blew this story, but I won't tell you that. At any rate, he, that was the story of his senior year in high school that he didn't get to go on the trip. So he went to work in a tire shop. He loved his job. He was the mechanic apprentice. He went to school to learn how to be a great mechanic and he was having a great time. When one day someone came in and looked at him and said, you must play basketball. And he goes, no, how can I help you? Well, why don't you play basketball? You must be seven feet tall. He said, well, actually I'm 6'11". The man said, well, I'm gonna bother you again. I think you should play basketball. Needless to say, the man came back again two days later and said, have you given any more thought to basketball? He said, sir, I am not playing basketball. I have no interest. That was the end of that. 
Again, the man comes back. He says, I have a sound in my car. Could you get in and drive it and see if you can tell me what it is? They drove around. He talked to him about basketball. And he said, someone your height, you should play basketball. Sir, I'm going to fix your car. I'm not playing your game. Two days later, the man came back with a coach from the local junior college. They had another conversation with him, same story. Three days later, the man came back. He said, I'll leave you alone on one condition. You give me 30 minutes on the basketball court and see if it makes a difference in your game. Ah, okay. So they go to the basketball court the man shows him what to do, where to hold the ball instead of doing with what everyone else does, mere mortals of 5'10 to 6'1. He showed him what to do because he towered over everybody else. And all of a sudden, the young man saw a difference. This coach just happened to be an assistant coach at the local junior college. This young man started playing at the junior college. They won 30 games that year. And the next year they won the state championship for junior colleges. The young man was then drafted with the help of his coach by the Utah Jazz. His coach said, as you get ready to go play with the Utah Jazz, you need to get more skill playing with difficult, challenging players. So he started playing pickup. One day he heard, felt a tap on his shoulder and he turned around. No, he did not look up. He looked down at Wilt Chamberlain, because by now the young man was 7'4". Wilt Chamberlain said, I've been watching you. You've got some skill, but do you know your job? What do you mean, do I know my job? Wilt says, see this basket? Your job is to be right here and keep that ball from going in this basket. And then you get the rebound and give it to someone on your team that can shoot. He started doing that and his basketball game changed forever. And so did the record of the Utah Jazz. A few years later, this young man who was never going to play basketball again was on the all-star team. Seven foot four, Paul Mark Stockton. You know what else Mark Stockton was? He was a Toastmaster. You can prove it on the Toastmaster website. But that's not the most important part of this story. He has written a book now called The Four Commitments of a Winning Team. And he breaks down what it takes to be a winner as a team. Think for a minute. Who's on your team? Are you a club officer? Who are the rest of your team members there? Are you an area director or a division director? Who's on that team? Are you an IP Diddy? You probably look at your golf team. He made four commitments, Mark Stockton, of what it takes to be a good team member and make a team work. So I want you to think those team members that you mentioned, your club members, maybe another club that you belong to, maybe a group that you play bunko with or people that you work with children with, any group that you're with. Oh, another team? I bet you have a family. This works there too. So the first role of being a team player is to know your job. Remember how Mark got taught by Wilt Chamberlain that running after people was not his job, protecting the basket was. Once he established that skill, he was an incredible asset to his team. So he had to know his job. One great thing that you can do with your team, whether you're the leader or not, is suggest that you all get together and talk about what each responsibility, each of your responsibilities are within the job. We don't really stop to think about it. We get a job description in Toastmasters, let's say as the PR chair, and we know what we're supposed to do. But what happens if we can't do it? What happens if the membership chair is not at the meeting? Who's going to send 
all the information to the guest? Or is anybody even going to get the guest's information and send it to the membership person? So if you all talk about what your role is, how you do it, and how someone can fill in for you when you're not there, wow, what a difference that makes, especially when you have guests or when certain things aren't happening. For instance, in one club I belong to, we have extra table topics. We have a little file in Google, Google Docs. We have extra words of the day. We always know who people are that have pocket speeches in case someone doesn't show up. And we can find all that in Google Docs and we can put all of our meeting together if all the role players don't come. Can you do that with your team? So think about these things and I hope as I keep talking, maybe you write some things down that you can take back to the teams you work with. So number one, know your job. Number two, this one's hard for me. Do what you're told. Mm, the nuns will tell you I've always had trouble with that one. But it's really important. Let's say that we're on a team and I'm going to use our IP Diddy as an example, or I see there's another past district director governor here. We all know what our job is. Oh, and our current district director is here. Pardon me, Jacqueline. So we all know what our job is. You know, maybe we're the program quality director. Names have been changed. Identities have been changed. I'm not talking about anyone in particular. I'm just using this as an example. But let's say the club growth director really loves to plan meetings. But that's not his job. His job is to go out and start clubs and help clubs achieve excellence. But he wants to be in charge of the convention or the district conference because he knows how, not his job. But it is his job to be a member of the trio, or he may be a woman, it may be her job, to be a member of the trio and know what needs to be done for the convention or conference and add input on, oh, I know someone that can do this, or I know someone that can video for us and their price is great. But don't try and take over someone else's job because I'll bet the district director has got a pretty good plan of what they need done. And if you do your job and the other people do the job that the director is assigned, it all works. So one example Mark gave in the book is ask. Ask your boss, what is it you want me to do? And then you can do it. And also ask your teammates, how is the best way for me to help you do your job? How can I fill in for you? What would you like me to do in my job that would send over things to your job that makes it easier for you? That's really, when more team members do that, we get excited about working together instead of worrying about who's not gonna get their job done that gets information to me on time. The third, commitment that we make is to make others look good. So John Stockton is someone that we can really use as an example here. He was not the biggest basketball player like Mark Stockton, but he was so efficient and so good. He was great at stealing the ball and knowing where all of his players were going to be and passing the ball off. But he didn't just grab the ball and pass it. He grabbed the ball, saw the player, and knows exactly where that player likes to receive the ball, and he sent the ball exactly to that position. Sounds like something quarterbacks need to do too, right? But it's things we need, we need to hand off the ball, in, so to speak, as a metaphor to our fellow players. So if we know how they need things to come to them, we can make them look good. Also, as team members in team meetings, we can shout out to our members. Oh my gosh, Nancy did the greatest speech the other day about the words we need to use. I learned so much, I just can't wait to apply some of them. Or, you know, we have a new member in the district and can you imagine she's met everybody on this meeting and I bet we all hear from her by the end of the week. Julie Cooley is amazing, and she's from another district. Maybe we could ask her for some ideas. Let her speak at our meetings and tell us what they used to do in District 53. So let her feel important and like we really need her here. Another thing is recognition. 
as team members or as team leaders, we can always give recognition. Don't you love it when someone notices what you did? And do you know how easy it is to reward people? Now, I don't mean, ah, oh, wait a minute, one prop is in the bag. I have a whole bag of tricks for recognition. And I don't mean that you have to, and I dragged the wrong one, wrong one out of the bag. I don't mean you have to give them a hundred grand. Although on Halloween, they probably love this hundred grand bar. But you can get a pad of sticky notes, a pad of stars, a pad of hearts, and you can write just a little tiny note for somebody and just stick it on their paper as they're sitting in the meeting. Thanks for helping me out the other day, or you really did a great job with that presentation. I used to do that when I was in the district trio, and I've had people tell me that they still have those stars and hearts. It really makes a difference. So recognition, make people look good and feel good. Commitment number four, the last one, protect others. So everything I've said before, asking people what they need you to do, letting them know what you need from them, I think all of that, when you can incorporate it and go back and ask them if there's anything they need, that's how we protect them. Because when we're supporting them and making them feel like they're part of the family, it really makes their job easier. So have you recognized all the people that work on your team? Have you said anything to them in the last month about what a great job they're doing or pointing out something they did that went really well? As club officers, you can just send an email to somebody, anybody, and say, what a great speech today, or I loved your table topics, or you know, I've noticed you come early every single week. I really appreciate that. It's nice to know we can count on you. People love to know that people see what they're doing and they will be more than willing to do things for you when you ask because you have made them feel so warm and fuzzy. So let's take a note from a seven foot four basketball player that refused to play basketball and we then learned how to be one of the best team players in the game. Let's remember to know our job, to make sure that we do what we're told, to make sure we ask our boss and our teammates what they need from us, to make others look good, always by just little notes and little thank yous, and to protect others, to bring them into the family, to make them feel like they're warm, received and that we're really glad they're here to introduce them to other people to connect them so that they have plenty of friends in the new group when they first get here so those are the commitments of a winning team they're the commitments that i learned from a former toastmaster who is now an incredible speaker out teaching other speakers to be better and learn their trades so that they can really help their audiences I hope this helps you, and I'd love to hear if maybe you go to your next team meeting and try some of these things, or you send some of these notes to people. I'd love to hear what reaction you get, because I'm collecting stories so that I can add them to this speech. So thank you all for being part of our team here in District 26. It's the people like you that show up time after time after time even when it's not your division that makes this District 26 experience so great for our members. I am grateful for all of you every day. Wow, thank you so much. Yes, let's give her those hands, round of applause, fabulous. Thank you so much to both of our fabulous speakers. I. I overuse fabulous a lot because I think that's the unique word to say instead of great or very awesome. You guys did a fabulous job. I was very impressed. I've still got to work on my berries there, Nancy. I was supremely impressed with both speeches. You're challenging me on the fly. Thank you so much to Stephanie again for working through this and for the area directors for being here. 
We have plenty of extra time for us to socialize and share with each other. We shared a little bit about Foothills already, but if you have any other announcements in your area or in your clubs or personal shout outs that you wanna do, I give you the floor now to take some time. If we end early, we do, but the meeting is around. Nancy, go ahead. I want to encourage clubs that have low membership due to the last renewal period, go back and talk to those members that did not renew and tell them that they can get a free path if they renew by the end of the year. That's a wonderful Toastmaster, a wonderful thing that thing, there we go, a wonderful <laughs> plan <laughs> that Toastmasters has offered. Awesome. Great. That is really awesome. I did just read that. I thought that was something that I need to share with the VPPRs. I thought, ooh, here's a great opportunity that we could share in the PR world. Hey, did you guys see this? Did you know this is something that you can do? Definitely reach out to there. Linda, right. before Some... I forget, would you post in the chat the name of that book and the author again? I will. That would be great. And another thing that you can do I think it was region one posted a cute little meme about the free gift and they posted it. So I posted it on my Facebook page. So if you want to go find that cute meme about the free pathways, you can go get it on my Facebook page and share it or copy it and paste it, whichever you choose. Um, and the book is Mark Eaton, Mark Eaton. Uh, the four commitments of a winning team. And I'll put it in the chat. Okay. I was busily chatting, uh, writing as you were speaking <laughs> and trying to remember all these notes. And about halfway through, I remembered a teacher, a professor said to me, when you want to know something, ask them the reference and stop and listen to the speech or stop and listen to the speaker. Don't worry so much about taking the notes because it's more important that your brain hears it than your hand writes it. You can always ask them later, could I have that information? Could you give me that reference? So I stopped jotting and said, I know she'll tell us later. <laughs> that was a great book. I'm looking forward to that. Any other shout outs or announcements? Mike, I was gonna say, you got your mic off. You must have something to say. <laughs> well, along what Linda said is recognition. You, if you did not attend a Hall of Fame, you might not know that we have two area directors of the year and one division director of the year on the call today. That's right. <laughs> that Hello, would be Dolly you. and Mary Ann for areas and Bonnie Ann for division director of the year. So thanks for plugging Woo. in Woo. and supporting Foothills. That's right. That is a great, great, great achievement. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mike. Mike actually said, well, I, I have to write these things down because I will always forget to say someone's name. And so thank you for taking care of that. But along the lines of recognition at our recent death meeting on Tuesday, I went through the team and just thanked everyone for the work that they've done throughout the first quarter because I know how difficult it has been. And so for those of you who may not have heard it, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing during this COVID, during this unusual time where we're all at home and it seems unrelenting. We don't know when we're going to get back to normal. So thank you, especially area directors, you guys are on the front line. I want to extend my gratitude to all of the area directors, again, for all the work that you do for getting in there, calling the clubs, getting in contact with the clubs that are just some of them are just not responsive right now. That's characteristic of this time of the year sometimes, but unfortunately we have the double whammy of COVID. So thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you um, division directors for all the work that you guys do. You guys are the, the step up from the area director. So sometimes you, you get communications from me that, okay, send this to your area directors, but thank you for just all of the work that you do and for being supportive. Thank you 
Trixie, thank you to it. And see, here I go again. I'm going to forget someone. So I'm going to stop now. <laughs> I was actually going to say, you better stop because I know you, girl. I know. So like, I, I will party. forget someone. I will, but I want to say thank you. I want to echo Mike's sentiments. Congratulations to all of you who had a wonderful achievement in the last year. See, again, I will forget to say the right thing. So all of you who had a DTM, a triple crown, whatever it may be, division director of the year, Miss Bonnie Ann Smith, area directors of the year, I covered it all. See, <laughs> I covered it all. And last but not least, that communication came out from the international president regarding the additional path. I put, I, put, I tried to put something on our Facebook page and on our Facebook members page. If it wasn't the correct thing, I do apologize for that. But I know that it was actually sent out this morning to the division directors to disseminate to the area directors and also to send out to the clubs that we need to take advantage of um, having that extra path available to us. So that's all I have. Thank you. You did a great job, Jacqueline. I did notice that and I thought, oh good, I'm so glad that she did that because I've been a little crazed this week. So see, you're a part of my team. I know that I can rely on even outside of my PR team that I, whether it's the leadership, any which way that I can rely on that. Marsha Wood taught me trust the team. And that <laughs> is the one thing that I really gained from that. And that's trusting the team of your leaders, that they'll do their job and that they'll learn the lessons that they'll learn and that they'll grow just as well as you will in your team of the people that you manage. And I am very glad for those shout outs on the district call. That was really awesome that you did that, Jacqueline. And I want to commend you for doing that. And thank you, because that is quite a task to list those people, say thank you for that. And I think it really does mean a lot. I think all of us said, oh, wow, Jacqueline took the time to thank us. It wasn't just, hey, what are we going to talk about? Or it wasn't, hey, let's do reports. It took the time. And that is as important, if not more important sometimes, than we need to get down to business. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. One last thing. I probably shouldn't say this, but thank you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Julie Cooley, she's here from, she just transferred in from, what is it, District 53? And I'm happy to say she's a member of my club. She's a member mm -hmm. of the <laughs> so we, we grabbed her and she might join another club. I'm not sure, but the Aurora Tours have her now. <laughs> yes, we heard about that. Yeah, I'm still part of District 53 too. So that's my, that's my club. So that's my two clubs. <laughs> Awesome. That's really, really great. Yes, being a part of dual districts is a challenge. I've learned that myself. I'm in District 26 and District 23, and I stumble over those sometimes, so that's awesome. Any other announcements? Frank, uh, oh, go ahead, Bonnie. And Frank, I'll give you a chance in a minute. Go ahead, Bonnie. While we have everybody, I would like to make sure you know that on November the 13th, which is a Friday, we have a great leadership encouraging people to sign up for the December district office openings. And if you enjoyed Nancy's speech tonight, <laughs> she is also going to be one of our speakers on November 13th. <laughs> you know most of the people, they're both from Southern as well as several district, district directors. So, <laughs> Come on November 13th, it's on the district calendar. And I will, other than giving us a plug for my, my own club, I'm with Speak Leaders, it's an advanced club in the Southern Division in Colorado Springs. We meet twice a month. Come and join us because we're a pretty good group. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And share with us, I don't know how many people are in advanced clubs. I was in one and I had to step out just because I never could get there on Saturdays for the district things. But why should somebody be interested in an advanced club? Tell us a little yes. bit. Yes, in all of our advanced clubs, we all do round robin evaluations, which is much different than a regular club evaluation. Mm -hmm. So you not only get your two to three minute evaluation, but every member of the club will give you a point or a tip that you did great or something that you can do to make your speech even better. And Another, uh, I know Nancy belongs to SMAC. I, I belong to Excelsior. Excelsior, Excelsior, I mean. 
That's okay. I'm like Evening Stars, and we're having an open house next Wednesday night. And we'd love to see you there. It will be posted. I think the flyer will make it on the district calendar. I don't know. But if anybody wants one, raise your hand, and I'll send you the information. I'll, I'll, Yay, Nancy. So we meet I'll, the second. I'll attend. And I'll attend. <laughs> cool. So advanced clubs are, Linda belongs to what? You belong to Excelsior, right, Linda? You no, and Dory. Yeah, that's Dory? right. Yeah. Excelsior. So does Dory. So I, I can remember when I was a brand new Toastmaster and I found out about the, the Evening Stars Club, I called and asked if I could join and they said, not until you finish your competent communicator. <laughs> Whoa, and that person's still a member of the club and I will never let him live that down. <laughs> you can always go as a guest, right? <laughs> right. So we love you no matter how far along you are in Toastmasters to come visit. Right. In addition to helping speaking with the round robin evaluations, for example, our club has 13 of our 19 members that are either current or former area division or district directors. So therefore, if you're gonna run for an office, if you're gonna be in office, get in touch with your advanced clubs. They can give you a lot of support. Awesome, great. We have four past governors. I think you do too at, uh... Excelsior, don't you, Nancy? Have that. You have, we have four past district directors and Evening Stars. You have about as many in uh, Alan, Excelsior. Joyce, and me. Oh, Anybody Judy's else? not there anymore. Judy's not there anymore. No, when Pathways came out, she was gone. That's true. I, I know. remember that now. I know. And Masters Advance Club has Marsha Wood. Joyce is in that as well. And uh, I was in that, and I'm trying oh, to. Marcia. Yeah, Marcia. That's the first person I said was Marcia. Yeah. Daryl, yeah. don't oh, forget right. him. You have Marcia now too. Marcia, don't, don't, don't forget Big D. Daryl's in that. Daryl. Yeah. Daryl, that's right. I I haven't been in there for a while, so I couldn't remember. And Marcia and Daryl are now? also speaking on November 13th. Oh wow. I have a request. If any of you are having open houses, just can you ensure that you send that information to me? I I try to attend as many as possible if it doesn't conflict with work. <laughs> but oh I, I, yeah, I, I've attended a couple at noon. So I, I think those are a lot of fun. So please, if you have open houses, we I would love to hear about it. Jeff Ruiz, our club growth director is he's considering putting on a district-wide open house and he's going to coordinate with Trixie on that. And so there's more information to come. <laughs> um, there was, he got the idea from another district. And so I think it's a pretty good idea. And so, yeah, look, look for that information. It should be forthcoming in the next couple of weeks or so. But, but, but in the meantime, any club open houses, I do want to hear about it. Okay. Well, sadly, I asked them earlier and they said no. So I challenge you all <laughs> to work on those virtual open houses and I would be happy to help you. I have logos already made up for district open houses, virtual open houses. So I can give you those. I have those in Canva. I'd be happy to send those to you. Again, anything that you need for things like that, I'd be happy to work with you. Linda, I want to give uh, Frank to, uh, to speak. I just want to say, send it to me now. Okay, <laughs> we'll do, we'll do. All right, Frank has been patiently waiting. Yes, Frank, go ahead and speak. Tell us what you're, you said you were looking for someone. So please talk to us about what you got going on. Yeah, I'm looking for someone, but not romantically. <laughs> Um, first, I just want to say how much I love Toastmasters and how it's become my second family, and it is so much cheaper than therapy. So uh, <laughs> thank you all for, for being friends of friends of friends. And uh, I also want to plug the good work that um, Alan and Beth Boaz are doing at the prison. I spent a year with them in the prison program, and it's extremely fulfilling to help people get over hurdles that help them earn their freedom and good behavior again, which is a whole different twist than the usual agendas. So please give support to Alan and Beth and pass that along. I know some people have the, like the Hollywood image of what prison's like, but it's not. It's like a lively <laughs> college campus in there. and It is quite safe, really. And it's a lot of fun, but I just want to plug that. And thirdly, uh, 
Trixie asked me to uh, get, give me permission. I'm looking for a speaker, a female speaker, a woman speaker. <laughs> well, there's a reason. Um, I'm in conversations with the Colorado um, Association of Activity Directors. I do a lot of work with senior residences and, and uh, senior retirement, elder, uh, uh, positive aging, advoc advocacy, that whole avenue. And uh, they're looking for speakers. And I already have some male speakers, but they want uh, they feel everyone is uh, under the effect of COVID mania, particularly with social isolation, already a critical issue in senior centers. And I'll spare the rest of it, you can imagine. Um, so they want some speakers to come in uh, and the gender reasons, because we already have males, uh, but they want someone to inspire with a personal story of overcoming. They want to hear overcoming and triumph and personal growth. So if you would pass the word through Toastmasters, your church, whatever, you can email me for details since I don't want to burn clock here. Um, but, and they'll pay a few hundred dollars for 90 minutes, um, actual here in Denver and virtual if preferred. That's all, that's my commercial plug. Need a speaker, a couple hundred bucks, 90 minutes, January 22nd for the Association of Colorado Activity Directors for Senior Centers. And I thank you for the, the time to be back and God bless you all and please be safe and have fun. Remember joy. <laughs> That's right. Now, why did I allow that? Because he is a Toastmaster. Toastmasters helped him to be able to speak more eloquently, to get those gigs, and to be able to reach out to other Toastmasters who want to grow and who might want that opportunity. Normally, no, I wouldn't allow people to do various plugs like that, but as long as that applies to Toastmasters, I want people to be able to share that because that's not, we didn't just join to drink the Kool-Aid and be division directors, <laughs> right? You know, we joined for our purpose. I joined because I was writing a book. I wanted to be able to not only eloquently write the words down, but speak those words eloquently. And that thus far got me into paid speaking gigs and things of that nature. And many Many of us are like that and want to further our careers and get a better job or get a better promotion and Toastmasters is what helps with that. So thank you for that, Frank. I appreciate that. Hopefully you get some information there. You can message him through the chat, give him your email. And if you need to reach him, Frank, I would go ahead and put your email in the chat as well so people can reach All you. Right. Yeah, right. Any other announcements or news that you want to share? Uh, any other people? Because I want to, if we are okay on time, you know, we like our time back, but it, I want to give the opportunity for everyone to speak. Linda. Uh, what do you, what do you call it when you take something back? I'm, I'm thinking of um, redact? redact. I'm redacting your invitation to the open house. Not that we don't want you and love you, but I just got a, I was looking up the Zoom link to send to Jacqueline so she could come to the open house. And I just got a note that we're not having it this week. It's been postponed. We're having a Halloween party instead. Oh. So you'd still be welcome, but it won't be an open house. It'll just be a fun party <laughs> and regular meeting. And uh, the word you're looking for is renege, not redact. Well, I was thinking with that because that I was trying to put it in a political time frame just because of what's going on right now. But you're right. Renig is much more what I did. But I still love you all. Let's talk to our thesaurus Nancy over there. Is that an acceptable word? Thesaurus Nancy. <laughs> now I want to like get her a little dinosaur and like call it like the thesaurus Nancy. <laughs> awesome. You're on mute, Nancy. I had one, uh, I have clocks going on in my house, so <laughs> I have to get, make sure that you don't hear them. I, I got stuck in one place in the speech that I was trying to change a few things today and I texted my son, he said, mom, just use thesaurus.com. <laughs> that's, that's a wonderful place to find another word. It's, it's absolutely, it's very interactive. I was, I was impressed. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great tip. You never know. I always type in synonym for whatever word I'm looking for, antonym for whatever word I'm looking for, and Google gives me whatever the thesaurus or dictionary says. Yeah. <laughs> 
I wasn't raised with the computer yeah. in my hand, but I'm definitely useful of it. Dolly, <laughs> please share with us, ma'am. Oh, I have a trivia question for you. Um, I'd like to know what was yesterday in the Toastmasters world? Ralph Smedley's birthday. Ralph Smedley's birthday, yeah. 24, uh, 96 years. I think, yeah, and also that was the day of the very first Toastmaster yes. meeting yes. Yes. 90 years ago. So all of you that are going to live 10 more years, you can look forward to the 100th. Yeah. Just a little bit of trivia if you didn't know that. And if you want to go look up trivia, you can look up how many Toastmasters meetings were held with Ralph Smedley in other states before that meeting. That's in that little that's in that little Toastmaster book, right? Um, I found it online when I was a brand new Toastmaster and I gave a speech on it. Everybody told me I was wrong. Oh. <laughs> because his first the first time he did a meeting was in Illinois. Right. Yes. He, he moved around the country he did. leading different toast uh, YMCAs. And when he finally got to the second club in one location, he started the Toastmasters organization, and then what was the first international club? Mm, that I don't know. Vancouver. Oh, okay. Oh. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I researched it all for a speech the other day. So, <laughs> lots of trivia information. <laughs> it's kind of fun to give those speeches in your club, though, because there's so much history that people don't know, and it really gives depth to the meaning of our organization. Well, I had a member of my club down in, in Rocky Ford in the Arkansas Valley area. Um, there's nobody here probably that knows her. And my, her name just escaped me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she was born on October 24th. And so it was always every year at the meeting, she would remind us that there was big, that was the um, beginning of Toastmasters. So that's why I know it. It's because of her. <laughs> Was it the 24th or the 22nd? I mean the 22nd of the 22nd. I remember it because it's, it's my aunt's birthday too. In 1920, in 1924, that's when she, I was got it confused. So it was October 22nd, it was 1924, the year. That's when she was born. <laughs> Dorothy oh. Chapman. Dorothy Chapman. Oh, I figured her. you were talking about Dorothy. Dorothy Chapman. She's still alive. She's in a nursing home that you can't go visit. So. <laughs> Unfortunately not, the world that we live in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I got a bottle of wine that's got my name on it, so. <laughs> Is it one of the ones the district sent you? Yeah, over there. <laughs> so, hey, Mike, I got some garlic bread. I'm gonna exit stage left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wax my surfboard. Jacqueline knows my wine hat. Well, Linda does too. What do I? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we know. He was oh, shared, know. We shared <laughs> some wine at those trainings. <laughs> no. We all know, Mike, we like all know now like after, after the roast. After the roast, we all know now, right? <laughs> yes, and if you missed out. the roast, you guys can watch that on YouTube or that's in our district website, the replay of that. So okay. You can okay. Hold on a minute. Not the roast, right? The oh, sorry. The Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame. That, that roast is not going to see the light of day. It wasn't the roast. <laughs> oh, right. But you can go I, up. I might need to get a job in this country someday. So I got I to gotta cover that. Uh, are you planning for, for, on running for an office or something? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you just never know. I don't want any of that stuff to haunt me. Uh, or, the, or the Secret Service, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> Trust me, when they bet you, they will find out. <laughs> All right, good night, everybody. Night, night, night. Yep. Well, Bye. it seems like we're actually okay to end a little early unless right. you have anything else. I think we're good to end at seven o'clock. We're good. All thumbs up. Yep. Thank you, Trixie. Thank All you. Right, so thank thank, thank you, you so much. Me. Good job, Stephanie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you. Great job, everyone. Bye. Good night. Take care. Bye. See you soon. Somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good night. You too.